as you can see, things are a little bit different today because music class is going to be a little bit different today. Today, I'm going to read you the story of the Nutcracker. The Nutcracker is a ballet, and a ballet is a type of show that you can see, like a play or a musical or an opera, you can go to see a ballet. Now, most of you know that ballet is a type of dance, but to see a ballet is a type of show. A ballet is a play that the story is told through dance and through music. So there's no talking, there's no singing, it's just told through dance which is pretty cool, but sometimes it can be hard to follow along. So today I'm gonna to read you the story of The Nutcracker, which takes place on Christmas Eve. Now the music um, to The Nutcracker is gonna be playing while I'm reading you the story. The music that you're hearing right now, this is called The Overture. And The Overture is the first song you hear in a ballet, in an opera, or in a musical and the overture kind of gets the audience ready for the show that's about to start. So, what I want you to do for today's music class lesson is I want you to get yourself a hot chocolate and I want you to get a snuggly blanket and snuggle in so we can read The Nutcracker. Here we go. It was Christmas Eve, a night for magic. Anything could happen. Clara and her brother Fritz waited outside the door to the parlor. Their cousins crowded around. Would they catch a glimpse of the presents or of the tree? The children spilled into the parlor. The tree, full and fragrant, rose grandly before them. Sweets hung from its branches and candles lit its boughs. Clara's cheeks flushed with excitement. She ran to greet her godfather, Herr Drosselmeyer. He was an inventor and always brought the most unusual gifts, toys unlike any the children had seen before. This year, Herr Drosselmeyer arrived, bringing three tall boxes, each wrapped in festive paper and tied with bright ribbon. He opened the first. In the box was a soldier outfitted in full regimental dress. When the soldier was wound, he saluted smartly and clicked his heels. Harlequin and Columbine stepped out of the next boxes. The two clowns tumbled into somersaults, then dove into hand springs. They topped it all with a sprightly jig. Finally, Clara's godfather brought out a small, wooden soldier, no bigger than a doll. The soldier's hair was snow white, his head was large, and his features coarse. Air Drosselmeyer placed a nut in the strange soldier's mouth. Crack! The soldier was a nutcracker. Air Drosselmeyer handed Clara the nutcracker and the sweet nut meat. Before Clara could taste the treat, Fritz bounded up and grabbed the nutcracker from her. He jammed a nut in its mouth. Snap! With one careless tug, Fritz broke the nutcracker's jaw. The children's father grabbed Fritz by the collar and scolded him roundly. Air Drosselmeyer shook out a handkerchief and wrapped the poor soldier's jaw, repairing the damage the best he could. That night, after the party, when the others had long since retired to bed, Clara crept back into the parlor and cradled the wounded soldier in her arms. The hour drifted toward midnight. As Clara sunk sleepily onto the sofa, Air Drosselmeyer stepped from the shadows. 
he eased the nutcracker from the little girl's grasp. With a turn here and a twist there, he mended the soldier's jaw. The clock struck 12. Clara startled. Was that Air Drosselmeyer on top of the grandfather clock? And what was that scampering sound? Clara hid safely behind the sofa. A mouse scurried across the room, brandishing a sharp saber. Clara gasped. The mouse was as large as she. The Christmas tree too began to grow and grow and grow until the top branch of the tree scraped the ceiling. Fritz's toy soldiers, spirited and tall, marched out in tight formation. Even the nutcracker had grown as large as Clara. Just then, an army of mice charged across the room, attacking the toys. They were led by the mouse king, a leering, frightful creature with seven heads. The toy soldiers fought valiantly, but they were vastly outnumbered. The Mouse King pinned the Nutcracker with his sword. No! cried Clara. She hurled her slipper at the Mouse King, knocking him flat. The Nutcracker leapt to his feet, thrust his sword through the Mouse King's heart. The toys were the victors. He lifted the crown from the Mouse King's head and placed it atop Clarence. As the Nutcracker crowned Clara, the walls of the parlor dissolved into the night. Clara found herself standing at the foot of a snow-swept hill. White stars glistened in the blue-black sky. Snowflakes fell as softly as blossoms. Before Clara's eyes, the Nutcracker shed his awkward wooden figure and turned into a handsome prince. He tossed back his cape and bowed deeply before her. Clara glanced down. She was now dressed in a gown of rich brocade, the gown of a princess. Was this a dream or an enchantment? The prince took Clara by the hand. He led her to the edge of the ice-bright shore. Clara and the prince stepped aboard a boat with a graceful billowing sail. The boat floated up a river of nectar and honey. It passed trees hung with peppermint drops and arrived at a palace studded with glazed sugar and spires. My home is the land of the sweets, explained the prince. I rule from the marzipan castle. At the gates of the castle, Clara and the prince were met by the sugar plum fairy and the delicate angels who attended her. Welcome home, the fairy greeted the prince. When the prince told the tale of his battle with the mouse king and introduced his friend, Clara was brave in the battle, he said. She struck down the mouse king and saved my life. With great ceremony, 
Clara and the prince were led to the banquet hall, where they took their places at the grand throne set with trays of sweets. The sugar plum fairy beckoned her troop of delicacies. Let the celebration begin, she proclaimed. First to perform were the two hot chocolates. They danced a Spanish fandango, a click with castanets. Next came Arabian coffee. She wore gauzy flowing silks that shimmered when she swayed. She whirled amid a swirl of scarves, a clack and clang of bangles. The Chinese tea dancers fluttered their fans. Stepping Russians kicked up their heels, crisp as candy canes. Mother Ginger rustled in next wearing an enormous hoop skirt. When she parted her petticoats, children tumbled out, six, seven, eight, and more. Then came the flowers, ablaze with color. Their petals were sugared in bright garden hues. Orchid pink and marigold yellow, poppy red and wisteria blue. The flowers were touched by a drop of dew. As each was watered, it sprang to its toes and joined the others. Together, they danced the waltz of the flowers. Finally, 
the Sugar Plum Fairy came to the floor, escorted by her gallant cavalier. The two performed an elegant pas de deux, a fitting finale to all the dances of the Candy Kingdom. As the music faded, Clara knew it was time to return home. The delicacies bid her goodbye. Last to step forward was the Nutcracker Prince. Clara did not want to leave her friend. I'll never be far away, the prince reassured her. He promised Clara that they would see each other again one day. On Christmas morning, Clara awoke snug and warm in her own bed. She remembered the adventures of the night before, the battle with the Mouse King and the journey to the land of the sweets. Through it all, she had the company of her prince. Clara hugged the Nutcracker to her. She wanted no other present. Clara now knew a secret of Christmas that magic is the best present of all. The end. All right, my friends, that is the end of our story. I hope you enjoyed The Nutcracker. I think it is such a wonderful ballet and the music is so beautiful. In our Bitmoji room, I will link a video of the Nutcracker if you would like to watch it. I will link a video of the Nutcracker in our Bitmoji video. You'll have to read the board to see what to click to find the video, but I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you enjoyed the music and I hope you have a wonderful holiday break. Bye!